In this video, I'm gonna talk about where you wanna position yourself if you're playing third base or if you're playing shortstop. So where you stand and where you set up ultimately depends on what the score is, who's up to bat, does she have speed, what her count is, and where are the runners on the base pads. So we're gonna start at third base. So let's just say you've got nobody on, nobody out. A good rule of thumb on where you wanna set up is you wanna to go to the third base line and you wanna take two big old steps off that line. Now you don't want to be too far from the line because if that ball gets by you to your right, that's a double or a triple for that runner depending on her speed. So you want to make sure balls aren't getting smoked by you to the right. Now you also don't want to be too close because if a ball is hit to your right and you go backhand, you're stepping into foul territory so you're not even going to make, be able to make that play anyways because it's foul. So you want to make sure not too far, not too close. If you are maybe two big old steps off that line, you can still go backhand and cover that fair territory. Now let's talk about where you want to stand in front of the bag. So I always say once you get to the bag, you can take about three to four big steps forward. Now where you stand here, it depends on what hitter is up. If you have a four hole hitter up who usually hits for power, they're not going to lay a bunt down so you don't need to be in their face. If you have maybe the first hitter up, second hitter up, you got a slapper, you know chances of them maybe laying down a bunt are a little bit higher so you might want to creep up a little bit. Just make sure you know what kind of hitter is up, what the situation is. If you have a hitter with two strikes, more times, I'd say nine times out of 10, they're not laying a bunt down. So if they have two strikes, you can move back a little bit. Now, if it's a tie ball game in the seventh inning and she's got two strikes and the first two attempts she tried to bunt, she fouled it off, coach might be having her bunt again. So now you might want to be in a little bit. You've got to be ready for a swing, but you also need to be ready for a bunt. So know the situation, know what kind of hitter is up. Now let's talk about if there's a runner on first base. And I'll get to this when we talk about how you want to set up at shortstop. But if there's a runner on first base, our shortstop should be shaded a little bit up the middle because they need to make sure they cover that bag for the bunt. So as a third baseman, knowing our shortstop is moved more up the middle, we need to cover more of this five, six hole. So we can't hug this line too much. We need to make sure we're coming off the line just a little bit in order to cover this big old gap. So communication is key. Make sure you and your shortstop are talking every play about where you're situated. When I played shortstop, I was always telling my third baseman, hey, I'm shade up the middle, you got that five, six hole. Now let's talk about if there's a runner on second base. If there's only a runner on second base, shortstop's gonna be playing a little bit more straight up. So now you can kind of go back to where you were, obviously depending on what type of hitter is up. If there's a runner on first and second, shortstop is not gonna be shaded as much up the middle. They're still gonna be straight up because they need to make sure they're covering third base in case there is a bunt. So again, communicate with your shortstop, make sure you know exactly where she's standing. So you need to know if you need to cover more of this five, six hole, or if you can creep a little bit to your right. Now same applies if there's a runner at third base. All depends on who that hitter is, who's up to bat. If you got power hitter, you can move back just a little bit. If you've got speed, you can move up. Now if you're up, just make sure you and your shortstop have communicated that because if there's a little blooper over your head, that gives a shortstop a peace of mind that she's got to tail it over there to go get that ball. So now let's talk about where a shortstop would set up. So where I always like to set up for just straight up, nobody on, nobody out, I was shaded just a tiny bit more towards second. I didn't love standing in the middle between um, third and second because I knew my third baseman had good range. She was able to cut a lot of balls off to my right. So if you cut, go straight down the middle from third to second, I like to be a little bit more to the left, so a little bit closer to second base. Now if I had a slapper up, I was about baseline. Uh, it did, again, it depends on what kind of slapper she is, um, but if she is more of a soft slapper, I might be even a step in front of that baseline. I never played behind unless I knew she had really good power. So now let's say we've got a runner on first base. I've gotta be shaded a little more towards second base. So this is where I was playing this close to second base because I needed to make sure I could get to second base if that girl was taken off to steal. Once I was shaded up the middle, I immediately told my third baseman, hey, I'm shaded up the middle, you got that five, six hole, just like we talked about earlier in the video. So my third baseman had to come off the line just a bit in order to cover that area. If I had a runner on second base, 
I now had to make sure I was playing in the middle of second and third because if that girl takes off for a steal and let's say the girl at home is showing a bunt, I need to make sure I'm getting over to third base in time for to cover that steal because my third baseman went in to cover the bunt. Now, and this is a, for all my girls who are a lot older to where they're playing on teams where the pitchers are hitting their spots very well. You can play according to what that pitch is. So for example, when I was in college, I had a pitcher on my team who was so very accurate in her, in her drop balls that every single time she would pitch one and that girl would swing, the ball would be up the middle. So I was trusting my pitcher to hit her spots. If there was a runner on second base and I knew she was hitting her spots, if it was more outside, I could shade a little bit more up the middle knowing if that girl makes contact, that ball is probably coming to me, even though I need to be covering third on that steal. So know your pitchers, are they hitting their spots? If she's not hitting her spots, you might not want to shade too much. Now, if there's a runner on third base and your coach does not want her to score, you're going to be playing baseline or maybe about a step in front. Let's say it's seventh inning and it's tie game and there's a runner on third, your coach is probably going to have you baseline because they don't want that girl scoring in order to go ahead. If it's the sixth inning and you are up by eight runs, four runs, five runs, coach might have you behind the baseline because now you've got more range, you can see the ball a little bit longer and you can get that out and you're not even gonna worry about that runner. So it depends on what the game situation is. If it's a close game uh, and towards the end of the game, you might wanna be baseline so that girl doesn't score. If you don't care about that runner, Play how you normally play behind the line so you have a little bit more range and you have time to see the ball and get that out.